The checkout of the control system is complete. And now the X-38 is ready for the next test. Dropping it like a bomb from under the wing of a B-52, seven and a half miles above the Earth, and guiding it to a safe landing by remote control. The ZRV will not go into service until 2006, but crews are already training on Earth for the escape procedure. Like a roller coaster, this jet climbs and dives repeatedly, causing everything inside to go weightless for short periods of time. Not surprisingly, it's called the Vomit Comet. Go! they do would be they go through a connecting tunnel into the vehicle, close the hatch from the inside, there's a single button to activate all the systems, and then cold gas jets fire to push the vehicle away. We fly away using the cold gas jets uh, for about 20 minutes, and then we orient and use rocket motors on the back of the vehicle to slow it down, so then it starts to come down out of orbit. Then we position it so the nose is pointed forward and we pitch up to 40 degrees to the velocity vector and we fly in just like the shuttle, down to 23,000 feet above the target, then pull out the main parafoil. Then once we're flying under the parafoil, it's just like a skydiver's ride, and we fly to a very soft touchdown. With the X-38 attached under its wing, the B-52 is ready for takeoff. This bomber is older than most of the team members working on the X-38 project. For over 40 years, it has test flown nearly every experimental craft the U.S. has designed. I don't think a lot about the day we first put it on the station. That'll be a great day, there'll be plenty of celebration, and it'll feel really great that we have one. The day that really matters is the day that someone gets in this vehicle to come home. And their life, and their family's life, and the whole program is going to be dependent on that working right that day. The CRV is the first vehicle ever uniquely designed for space rescue. And I think the other thing that keeps the team going is to have worked so hard on this and then to have the reward of flying it. Okay, in all stations, 25 minutes to launch. 25 minutes to launch. The people aspect of this program is probably one of the more interesting aspects. Um, it's truly a team. Et ça, c'est pas grave. Ça, c'est une structure, c'est facile à refaire. In the S-38 program, we do have a large European contingent that's working with us. The European Space Agency uh, is a partner with us in the X-38 program. In the Netherlands, they're building the rudders for the space test vehicle. Um, in Spain, they're building the landing gear. The Germans had come up with a very interesting, very unique composite material, the thermal protection system that we're putting on the nose of that vehicle. In France, they've done a lot of the aerodynamics work and aerothermodynamics work with the new shape. Even small countries, uh, Belgium, for the space test vehicle, built a lot of the uh, structural parts of the aft of the vehicle. So it's really been all across Europe. Just before launch, the B-52 sends out a stream of white smoke to signal the crew on the ground. And we five, four, three, two, one, launch, launch, launch. The X-38 is in freefall, dropping at a rate of 500 feet per second, 39,000 feet off the ground. The small drag chute slows the X-38 down and reorients it horizontally so the parafoil can be deployed from the top. The 
parafoil deploys in stages, triggered in a precise sequence by pyrotechnic cutters buried within the mines. When it's fully opened, it is the same surface area as the wingspan of a Boeing 747. Okay, Chuck, you seen any more of 800 there? It's about thinking differently. It's why there's an X in front of the X-38. It's an experimental vehicle. It's about going off and really trying to create the new technologies, and we encourage the people here to think that way. Unlike the space shuttle, the skid-type landing gear on the CRV does not require a runway to land. And unlike the Soyuz, the parafoil can be steered so the astronauts can choose their landing site. because of what you're doing and because of where you know it's going. When you get an idea on paper and you turn around and then it's right behind you, uh, it, that's pretty exciting. And there's not a whole lot of places on the planet you get to go do things like it. My whole life growing up, all I saw were images of the Vietnam War on television. And I think to myself, here we have an opportunity to not have war be the defining factor of what is the politics of nations that a major collaborative effort is. And that'll be a very different dream for the next generation to think about. 